if you look at the survey map closely, you will come across spot heights, trigonometrical stations, benchmarks and surveyed tree. These are used to interpret relief between the contour lines. Spot heights, they are marked on the map using a black dot and a number will be written. So spot heights, they are also referred as spot elevations. This means that the height of that particular place where the point is 233 meters above the mean sea level. Sea level is the reference for measuring elevation on land and is accurately measured. Spot heights are not marked on the ground. They are marked only on the map. Let us take few examples here. Like you can see a black dot is there and a number is written 233. Here you see a black dot and the number written 301. So this 233 means the height of the place where the dot is 233 meters above the sea level. We can take another example here a dot and the number what is written here is 542 that means the height of the place where the dot is is 542 meters above the mean sea level and it is accurately measured now these spot heights they are only marked on the topo sheet but these are not marked on the ground. We take the next. You can see that a black triangle with a dot and a number is written 217. So this stands for trigonometrical or triangulated heights or points. We may call it trigonometrical heights, we may call it trigonometrical stations or we may call it triangulated heights or stations or points. The number that is 217, the number indicates the height in meters above mean sea level. Now these are marked on the ground by pillars. So pillars will be constructed on the ground and on these pillars the elevation and the coordinates of the points are specified. So this trigonometrical or triangulated stations, they are marked on the map as well as they are marked on the ground. Spot heights, they are only marked on the map. Let us take an example here. Like you can see here, a triangle is there and a number is written 217. That means the height of the place is 217 meters above the sea level. Now we call them trigonometrical stations because the height here is determined using trigonometrical ratios. Capital B dot capital M dot 225.3 this refers to benchmarks. So benchmarks show the height above sea level and are the most accurate height. See the height is given to the first decimal place. In others it is 233 or 217. But here the, the height is given to the first decimal place. So that's why it is considered to be the most accurate height. Now these benchmarks, they are marked on the ground 
and are found along roads, railways and canal. So they will be marked on the ground and they will be marked on the topo sheet also. Now there are three types of benchmark. If it is written in bold letters, as you can see here, now this type of benchmark refers to geodetic benchmark. So normally these benchmarks, they were put during geodetic survey. Geodetic survey means when the entire region was surveyed. Of course, this type was of survey was done by the Britishers. The second type, you can see here, not so bold, BM 225.3. These are called tertiary benchmark. So when we do the local survey of a region and we update certain informations, so then it will be put in this manner. So such benchmarks, we call them as tertiary benchmark. The third type you can see it is written in, uh, it is uh, given in blue, a blue dot with a number written in blue, 63. So these are called canal benchmark. Usually when we are constructing a canal, so such type of benchmarks are given. So it is marked on the ground as well as it is marked on the topo sheet. Now let us refer to the topo sheet. Here you can see two benchmarks are given. One along the metal road. This is a metal road. Another benchmark is given along the railway line. So it is written BM 225.3 and this is written BM 224.6. So this is not geodetic, it is a tertiary benchmark. We take the fourth, that is survey tree. And this is the symbol for survey tree and a number will be written. All are given in black color. So let us see what is a survey tree. Normally a large tree is chosen. It can be a banyan tree or it can be a people tree or any other large tree. Normally in India, banyan tree and people tree, they are worshipped and therefore they are not cut down. And these trees, they are very large and they can be seen from a great distance. So normally these trees are chosen as landmark for survey. So when we survey the region, surveying is done through the method of triangula triangulation method it is called. So during that method, or during the survey, we require certain landmarks. So these trees are chosen as landmarks. And they are, they are put on the topo sheet. The number 181 here represents the height of the place, not the height of the tree. It is the height of the place where the tree is in meters above the mean sea level. Now let me take some examples here. Like you can see this is a survey tree. 2, 1, 3. This is another survey tree. 1, 8, 0. Since uh, spot heights, they are only marked on the topo sheet and they are not marked on the ground. So sometimes Instead of spot heights, we take survey trees because the tree is all already there on the ground and we put it on the topo sheet. And so these are used for interpreting relief between the contour lines. In the previous module, 
I told you about the contour lights and how we interpret the relief features. But to interpret the relief features in between the contour lines, we make use of spot heights, we make use of triangulated stations, we make use of survey tree, and we make use of benchmark. Now I'll be referring to the drainage pattern. A drainage pattern is formed by a river with its tributaries and uh, in the topo sheet we have to identify the drainage pattern. It's a very important question. Now <clears throat> there are four types of drainage pattern. They are first one is dendritic. We also call it tree like pattern just like a tree. The second type is a trellised or rectangular pattern. The third is referred as radial drainage and the fourth we call it disappearing pattern. So let us take the first pattern that is dendritic pattern. It's a very common type of drainage pattern. You can see this is the main stream which we call it the consequent stream because this stream is flowing in this direction due to the consequence of the slope and these are tributary streams these are tributary streams to this consequent streams and you can see that the streams tributary streams are joining in a slanting manner or we say obliquely and that is why we call these tributary streams as in sequent stream. Now this consequent and in sequent they are relative terms like for this consequent stream this is an in sequent stream but if we consider this part then this becomes the consequent and this stream becomes the in sequent. So these are relative terms and the pattern that we get is just like a tree without its foliage and that is why we call it tree like pattern. It's the most common type of pattern and normally found in areas where the substratum is homogeneous. Substratum means underlying rocks. So underlying rocks, they are same type. If it is hard, then everywhere it is hard. If it is soft, then everywhere it is soft. Let us take the second type that is called trellised or rectangular pattern. Let us consider this figure. So you can see this is the main stream and it is called the consequent stream and these are tributary streams to this consequent streams and they are joining nearly at right angles. The same thing we can take it here this is a consequent stream and these are tributary streams joining nearly at right angles. So these tributary streams which joins the consequent stream nearly at right angles we call them as subsequent stream and again these two are relative term because if we consider this part then this is the consequent and this is the subsequent and that is why the pattern is just like a trellis or we call it rectangular pattern. Now this type of pattern is found in areas where the substratum is heterogeneous. That means here you have alternate hard and soft rocks. So where you see the streams flowing, definitely that 
those areas have soft rocks and where you do not have streams these are the areas of hard rocks we take the third type that is called radial drainage you can see from a central region streams are flowing out in all directions so that's why we call it radial pattern now this type of drainage will be associated with these two relief features either a conical hill or peak and the second feature is ridge so that is how we understand the relief feature by seeing the pattern of drainage so normally where you have radial pattern there may be a conical hill or peak or there may be a ridge now let us take the fourth type the fourth type of drainage pattern is called disappearing pattern you see the figure here the stream is shown by broken lines this means that the stream or river is having an undefined flow sometimes the stream may not join a river and it will disappear so such a pattern we call it disappearing pattern now there are few conditions where you have this pattern of drainage so i have written it here the conditions the first condition is the underlying rocks they are porous or substratum is porous you may have sand features or you may have limestone so where where you have sand or limestone the stream the water will sink beneath and will disappear the second condition in areas of scanty rainfall now since there is inadequate supply of water at the head head means where the river or stream originates so if there is adequate inadequate supply of water the water the stream will not flow for a long distance it will rather disappear either it sinks below or due to high rate of evaporation the water will evaporate so these three are the conditions for disappearing pattern so this type of pattern they are usually found in areas where you have arid and semi arid regions or where you have limestone regions now i'm going to show all the four types referring to our topo sheet let us refer to this pattern of drainage you can see that this is the consequent stream and these are tributaries to this consequent stream and you can see that they are joining in a slanting manner the impression is of a tree without any leaves and therefore we take this pattern as dendritic you can refer to this drainage pattern here or here you can see that the tributary streams they are joining nearly at right angles and therefore we call this pattern as trellised or rectangular let us refer to this relief feature you can see that there is a conical hill you have closed concentric contours and you can see the streams flowing out in all directions from this central region the streams are flowing out in all directions so this is an example of radial drainage and 
This drainage is associated with a conical hill. If we consider the whole feature, then this is a ridge. So either it may be a ridge or a conical hill. We'll take another good example of a ridge. See here, this is a very good example of a ridge. You see the long elongated contour lines and the streams are flowing out in all directions. They're flowing out in all directions. So therefore the pattern here is referred as radial drainage. So remember radial drainage will be always associated with a relief feature. And the relief feature is either a conical hill or a ridge. Now we are coming to the disappearing pattern. You can see that few streams, they are shown by broken black lines. These streams, they are not joining any other, other river or stream. They are, they are just disappearing. These streams, they have undefined flow. So such a pattern, we call it disappearing pattern. So this is a disappearing pattern. Again, this is a disappearing pattern. This is also a disappearing pattern. So the whole region has sand features. You can see these are the sand dunes and the whole map topo sheet is dotted. So that means this is a semi-arid region. And that is why we have this disappearing pattern because the substratum is porous and since it is a desert there is inadequate amount of rainfall and we know that over the deserts there is high rate of evaporation. Now let us refer to the river profile. You have studied about river profile in class 9. So let us recall a few things. The point from where the river originates that is called the head or source of the river. Finally, it will flow through the mountains, then through the valley and plains and finally it enters into the sea. So where it enters into the sea, that point we call it the mouth. The whole river can be divided into three sections or courts. This is the upper courts of the river where the main work of the river is to cause erosion. Then from here to here is the middle courts of the river and the predominant action of the river is transportation. And in the lower courts, the river slows down, the river becomes sluggish. And therefore, the main work of the river is deposition. Now, if you refer to the shape of the valley, a river will cut a valley. You can see the shape is V-shaped. That means in the upper courts or in the mountain courts, you have V-shaped valleys. and the river flows through a narrow channel and at this point it leaves the mountain and enters into the plains and in this middle course the river will be joined by a number of tributaries <clears throat> and therefore the volume increases and so the river will extend its valley the valleys become more extended, more broader. Since the volume increases, therefore the predominant action of the river is transportation. And finally, when it enters into the lower courts, the contours, they become wide apart. And finally, before entering to the sea, the river will distribute its channel 
into a number of distributaries. So in the upper and middle quotes, you have tributaries. But in the lower quotes, in the deltaic region, you have the distributaries because the river cannot maintain a single channel due to active deposition of silt. So let us refer to 45D by 7 and 45D by 10 because in ICC you will be doing this to topo sheet and most of the reverts are in the middle quotes. Most of the reverts. And what are the evidences that we get by referring to the topo sheet? The first evidence is extended river valleys. And how, we, how do we know that the river valleys are extended? Because the contours are farther apart. The second evidence is the river has a tendency to meander. Meander means S shape. Like you can see here, the river is flowing straight, but as it enters into the middle courts, you can see the winding courts, the S bend, these are called meanders. In the lower courts, the meanders, they become more acute, more pronounced. In the middle courts, the river begins to meander. And these meanders, they become more acute in the lower courts. So presence of meander is an important evidence to show that the river is in the middle courts. And the third evidence is the river will have a number of tributaries. Because in the lower courts, you have distributaries. Let us take an example of a river. <clears throat> and how do we know that the river is in the middle courts? You can see that the river has a tendency to meander. These are called meanders. And the river is joined by a tributary stream. And there will be other streams that will be joining the river. And you see the contour lines. You have one contour here and you do not have any other contour. And the river valley is also broader. So presence of meander, tributaries, these indicate that the river is in the middle courts. Let us take an example of another river. Here we have two river, one is Banas river, another is Balram Nadi. Hindi terms is, re, is, is used here. Nadi means river. Now by referring to the dimension of these two rivers, you can very well know that Banas is the most important here. Because you see it is broader than Balram Nadi. So therefore, we can take Balram Nadi as a tributary to Banas River. This river is dry. If this river would have been perennial, then, de then there would be blue color. But you have a thin blue line which is passing through the bed of the river. So this thin blue line refers to that there is still some water is flowing, but the river is dry. And there are features like you have an island. This is the river island. There is another island here. There is another island here. So since the valley of the river is broad and therefore we can see the island. And this is the tributary river to the main river. And this point is, no, is called the confluence, where the two inner banks meet, that is called the confluence. This point is the confluence, the meeting point of the two reverts. And there are many other tributary streams which is joining this. The river bed is dry, it is sandy, 
but there is still some water flowing and we will call it a dry river. Now let us identify the right bank and the left bank of the river. So to identify the left bank and the right bank, first we have to know in which direction the river is flowing. The flow of the river always will be in the direction of slope. Now sometimes an arrow sign is given, like for Balram Nadi you can see an arrow sign. If the arrow sign is given then we can know the direction of the flow of river. If arrow sign is not given then we have to refer to the contours or we have to refer to the spot heights. So let us visualize few spot heights here. Let us find some spot heights and we will see in which direction it is increasing or decreasing. Now you have to consider all these spot heights or if there are any other survey tree or anything. So let us first see it is 192 here. You can see it is written 192. It is a survey tree. Let us move in this direction. There may be one or two places which will be shown by higher elevation, doesn't matter. But we have to see the overall, what is the tendency. So the first thing we have located a spot height or survey tree which is 192. Let us take another survey tree, it is 180. Let us take another spot height, it is 177. And let us take another 172. And let us take another survey tree, 167. So you can see that the tendency is that the spot heights, they are decreasing from east to west. So when they are decreasing from east to west, west definitely land also will be sloping from east to west and the river flow also will be from east to west because the flow of the river always in the direction of slope. Now let us see, let me draw the river. Suppose this is the Banas river and already we know that the river is flowing from east to west because the top of the Topo sheet is taken north, bottom is south. This side we will take it as east and this side we will take it as west. So the Banas river is flowing in this direction. So let us imagine that we stand here and we face in the direction of the flow of the river. Then your right hand will be pointing towards the right bank of the river and your left hand will be pointing towards the left bank of the river. So therefore let us take here, this is the Banas river and it's flowing in this direction. So if you imagine yourself standing here, so your right hand will be pointing towards the right bank. So this is the right bank of the river Banas and this side we call it the left bank. So the right bank settlements are Chekla, Arniwada and Karcha. And the left bank settlements are Rampura and Nani Vatamal.